Hello again, and welcome back to my channel, The Broken Hearted Homesteader. And uh, the title of my channel, the, um, the name of my channel is even more significant today because today marks the three year anniversary of the event that started everything that has led up to this channel. Three years ago today at about six, or 7 p.m., uh, my son rushed me to the emergency room because uh, the pain in my chest had become so bad that I couldn't function. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't. I couldn't function. Function. Um, I had been having uh, slight chest pain on and off for the two days previous, um, very minor, and because I am a person that suffers from panic attacks. I chalked it up to having a panic attack and I didn't pay enough attention to my body to understand what exactly was going on. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video today. So I wandered around, I met with a group of friends, I painted kitchen cabinets all the, the whole time having this minor chest pain, which I chalked up to a panic attack. And by the time uh, 6 or 7 p.m. rolled around three years ago, I could not sit up or lie down or find any comfortable position left where I could draw in a breath without extreme pain. So at that point, I was pretty darn scared and uh, thankfully, Alex, my son, was available to take me to the hospital. And um, at the hospital, they decided they would do tests overnight because there was no, there was nothing in the preliminary tests that they did to tell them, yes, this woman has had a heart attack. So they were actually going to send me home. And um, before we left, I said, well, I'm just gonna visit the restroom before we go home and um, I went to the restroom and just about passed out at, in the restroom. And so they said, oh, I guess you should probably stay overnight and we should observe you and figure out what's going on. So uh, the, one of the things they do um, in, this, in that case was to take uh, blood every couple of hours and measure the readings. And the readings of a certain um, thing in the blood tell you whether you've had a heart attack or not. So um, in the morning, that was a Saturday night, I believe. So Sunday morning, um, the doctor waltzes in and says, guess what? You have had a massive heart attack and you need um, to go back to uh, the stent pr procedure, the cath lab immediately. And we need to see what's going on back there. So um, pretty scary stuff. So I had uh, one stent placed in um, my LAD, which was 99.9% .9 blocked. That's why they call it a Widowmaker. Most people don't survive that kind of a heart attack. Very few people survive. So I am super, super thankful uh, today that I am here and able to share this information with you. So... Um, as you know, that heart attack uh, led to numerous other issues that I have been um, dealing with in the last three years. So it's left me, um, it, took, it took almost two and a half years and many procedures and open heart surgery and um, the Home Rehabilitation Network, which I talk about all the time on this channel, they saved my life. Literally, they saved my life. I would not be able to breathe. I would not be able to function without them. I would not be able to walk without them because I couldn't. I couldn't get up from my chair and walk to the bathroom without having trouble breathing after my heart attack. Even after um, the stents, I had many different procedures to place more stents in. Um, even after the open heart surgery, my doctor had promised that I would be up running marathons within a month or two of the open heart surgery and still I couldn't breathe. 
like months and months after I was struggling, struggling to breathe, struggling to, to be able to do anything, to have energy to do anything. So that was my experience. Um, you know, it's just my personal story. So I don't know, you know, I can't speak to what it would be like for other people, but this is my story and I'm sticking to it. So three years is a long time to deal with this and to struggle and um, not be able to work full time and to try and keep life as you know it, um, all the balls in the air, it's just not possible, right? It's just not possible. Um, and you know, you do the best you can and you rob Peter to pay Paul and you, you make it work as best you can. Um, until the point when you can't make it work and then everything kind of falls apart and you know, um, you do something totally different, which is, um, my journey now. This is my totally something totally different. This is my, uh, new life. I make a very big distinction between my old life and my new life. Um, if you had asked me three years ago, would I be living, um, outside, uh, under a tarp? learning how to grow my own vegetables and be self-sufficient and depend on the rain as my source of water and the sun as my source of electricity. Um, I would have thought you got, you were totally crazy. Would I have thought that I could survive on very little sustenance um, and really be okay with all of this and be in some kind of um, positive frame of mind. I really might have thought that, uh, you guys had lost your mind if someone had suggested that to me three years ago. And yet here I am, here I am. And, um, are there hard days? Absolutely. Uh, I, I made a video about open heart surgery and my experience with that and how traumatic that has been for me. And, um, how the PTSD has made it extremely difficult still today to function. Um, just yesterday I was, I went down to, um, the shepherd center to get my lunch and there was a big, um, refrigerated truck that was backing up into a space and the sound that the truck makes that beeping sound as it's backing up just about, sent me into tears. I literally wanted to crouch in a corner somewhere and try to hide. Um, the other day at Panera, someone had a video playing, um, really loud, really loud. And I like covered my ears because the noise bothers me. Even I have a rolling handbag. And, um, when I go to Panera, I take the bag with me. And once I fill the bag, once I fill my thermos, with ice, the thermos is pretty heavy. And so instead of carrying it over my shoulder, then I pull out the handle and I can just roll it home. But even sometimes the clicking of the wheels rolling is too much for me to handle. Um, and I have to pick it back up. And even if it's heavy, I have to carry it because I can't stand the clicking of the, of the wheels on the pavement. So just stuff like that, that makes life you know, a little trickier than, uh, it was prior to, uh, this day three years ago. Um, I think of, you know, especially, uh, my son, when I, when I tell you that open, that having a massive heart attack and open heart surgery and all of these things has changed my life. I'm not the only one at all. My son was 17 at the time. And he had to sit in a hospital room for two days, wondering if his mom was going to be alive when he came back to visit the next day. And no one else was with me. Um, it was just me and him in that hospital room. It was hard. It was hard. Um, and so he was 17. He was going into his final uh, year of high school. And that boy turned down scholarships to uh, schools 
to be with me and to to support me and help me through these um, last three years and it's taken a toll on him and if I could give him any gift I would give back to him you know maybe taking better care of myself maybe listening to my body more so there wouldn't be so much heart damage um, you know like I would do more to prevent if I could uh, so that he wouldn't have had to live the last three years the way he's had to worry and live um, at my bedside many times in the hospital and you know um, now he's he's missed out on the opportunity for schooling and those those um, scholarships that he could have had are gone and so now he's going to have to struggle um, to get grants or um, whatever he can find to be able to finish putting himself through school and get his degree so he can move on with his life now that I'm finally able to move on with my own my own life so it's not just me that pays the price which is another reason why I make this video today um, you know do what you can to take care of yourself for you because that's first and foremost the most important thing and um, but also you know there's people that love you and care about you and need you and they need you to be healthy and whole for them too so that's um, the message of the day and uh, the other thing that I wanted to share was um, when I was in the hospital after that heart attack and they were running all kinds of tests everything was coming back like I was fine and I was totally healthy my cholesterol was fine you know like all the things that they check that would have indicated that I should have had a heart attack were totally fine I had no indication and the only thing that uh, my family does have some history of heart related issues but the only cause that was glaringly obvious was stress and the amount of stress I was under uh, because of the circumstances I was going through with my divorce and my daughter. Um, so stress is a killer, for sure. So if there's anything you can do to let things go, and that's what I'm learning three years later, it's taken me all this time to let things go. Uh, one week ago, my daughter was supposed to start school here just down the road from my house. Um, She's going to homeschool with him, and that means um, that I won't get to see her, and I won't have a, really a, a say in her education. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, and it could cause a ton of stress. But I am realizing that I have to do and take care of things that I can control, and the rest of it, I have to let it go because it will kill me. The stress will kill you. So the more that you can try to come to terms with things and to really only focus on what you have direct control over, which is your own reactions and your own thoughts to things, it makes a big difference. I've noticed this past week when I've really been trying to just, you know, if something starts to bother me, I see a school bus, the other day there was a family with um, two kids with school uniforms and I almost like let it bother me and I was like, nope, this is not going to bother me. I have no control over this situation and I'm not going to let it fester and become stress that will then maybe create another health, health issue that puts more people and more lives in jeopardy. So that, those were the things I wanted to share today. And um, I may not be making as many videos in the next little bit because it's time for fall gardening and it's time to get really ramped up. And now that I've been learning so much about gardening and uh, my tower garden kind of wasn't so successful and I've had some 
you know, kind of oopsies with tomatoes and I've learned a lot. So now I want to try uh, really planting in the soil here um, on the homestead and really figuring out how to do this in the ground instead of just pots. Um, so I'm gonna be really busy working on amending my soil and I'll try maybe to make a couple videos on that if I can, but um, don't worry about me. Uh, I'm, I'm doing pretty good on the homestead right about now. So just wanted to give you an update and share all of that with you. I have a little bit of sunshine, not too much sunshine outside here today, but a little bit. Uh, so I have lots of sunshine in my heart today and I hope I can share that with you and maybe something in this video will help you. But if you have sunshine where you are, please um, feel free to share it with those around you that may need it. And with that, I will sign off for now. Take care. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.